that you might not know are actually about, I guess, love, I suppose. Uh, it's kind of weird, but yeah, today's theme is love. Uh, anyway, to kick things off, we're going to have uh, an absolute, uh, I guess, I guess a whopper of a run. We're going to be having The Evil Within 2, we're going to be amping up the challenge a little bit, and I'll have a runner describe that in a moment. Anyway, though, here is The Evil Within 2 featuring Jigsaw Killer. Take it away. All right. Hello there, everyone. Uh, I am Jigsaw Killer, and tonight we're going to be speedrunning The Evil Within 2. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get right into it here. So uh, let me just select new game here. This this game is a long intro, so we're just gonna go right into it, and then we're gonna explain the other run. So we're gonna select the Kumu. So three, two, one, and go. Alrighty. So yeah, we're doing the hardest difficulty in the game, the Kumu. The Kumu, if you're unfamiliar, the Kumu is one hit kill mode. Any any damage you take. It's over. You you lose. You go back to the, the last checkpoint, and you know you, you retry again. And in this run, I'm going to do my best to explain everything in the run, and, and you know how we can avoid such such bad things happening while going through the game fast. Uh, so this game is a sequel to The Evil Within that came out in 2014. This came out in 2017. No, no, no this um, is not happening. This this game happens three years after the first game, in which if, if you're unfamiliar with the uh, the story, basically the first game is your plan is this character Sebastian here, and he he ends up in this like horrific situation and think think of like a movie like uh, Total Recall where you're in this like machine, and basically the antagonist of that game Ruvik, he's like the the core of everything that's going on, and so. By the end of the game, you know, you win, you get rid of them, you think that's like, that's really it, but there's actually uh, more going on than that. This Same as uh, during the story of that, you, you learn more about Sebastian and his past with his family and so on. And this uh, game uh, basically continues to on. Uh, what were you going to say, Yek? Sorry? I know really quick, uh, just to kind of give uh, some of the GQ viewers uh, a bit of a recap on uh, the past you've done the Evil Within 1 Akumu on the uh, Speed and Smooth Crypt. Yep. It is so, I guess, looking forward, how different is 2 going to be? Would you say it's easier or harder? Come on out. Uh, Akumu is, is easier than the first game, for sure. Uh, Akuma difficulty is actually a patched in difficulty in this game, by the way. It actually originally wasn't in the... In the Evil Within 2 right away, they added it in like a year later, I think. Uh, the original hard mode of this game is Classic Difficulty, which is... Uh, you can't upgrade, so there's like multiple ways that you can upgrade in this game. Uh, one is like upgrading with green gel, other is using like weapon parts to upgrade your weapons and so on. You can't do that in Classic, and there's no checkpoints as well. Um, <clears throat> what, what you do have is uh, seven saves, so you, you have a limit of saves that you can use. So you have to choose that wisely throughout the run. Um, personally, I would I still do think the first game's Akumu is harder than Classic in this game. But Classic is definitely, definitely more difficult than Akumu in this game. It's more... Uh, you can get away with a lot more in this game, so... <clears throat> so yeah, here we have the intro. But by the way, I really love the intro of this game. But uh, w one thing I'd like to point out as well, uh, some of you guys might have been playing the game uh, Hi-Fi Rush. That came out a couple of weeks ago. Very uh, very fun game to play. The director of that game made this game even within two. This is his original game that he uh, that he made. So after they finished this game, he uh, started working on Hi-Fi Rush. I'm coming, Lily. I heard uh, said game as well has a reference to the evil thing within it as well. There's multiple references. You see, there's like a robot of Sebastian in it and Joseph, and you see the mirror and so on and so on. You hear some music and so on, things like that. It's pretty cool, actually. Hopefully it means good things coming up for Evil Thin fans. Yeah. Well, one thing as well, uh, so this particular event we're doing tonight has uh, Evil Thin 2, Ori 7, and White Day, um, which is pretty a nice little lineup with Evil Thin 2 and 7, because they both came out in the same year. 
And they're Wait, both pretty... Sorry? 2017? Yeah, 2017. This game came out in October 2017. You know, RE7 came out in January. Um, but I, I think it's pretty interesting because both games were very, like, instrumental in the franchise, you know? So yeah, we're just uh, skipping through here. Actually, let's uh, really let's change the over here to the classic one really quick. We'll use the other one from the first game. So uh, just like the first game, this game has like a lengthy intro. This they like to make lengthy intros for the, for these games. So we'll be doing a lot of running. I do. Uh, it's kind of like a meme with the the runs that we do with this game that. You know, we kind of like me when we're doing this intro because it takes so long. But I do actually kind of prefer the intro of this game because it just feels like there's so much more going on. You know, you can manage your stamina. There's just a little bit more going on. And then when you're playing the uh, the first game, you know, you're mostly you can't even sprint for for like all of it, pretty much. Um. But yeah, incoming here. So in, in the story right now, we're going to be introduced to the first antagonist of the game, Stefano. He's like a crazy artist, man, whatever you want to call him. He's he, he's like a he's like a fan favorite. Is this the right place? We're about to be uh, introduced to him soon. So uh, po let's point out the, uh, the differences with, between the f two games, because that's actually one of the biggest things. Um, what the... So, in even within one, your default stamina, you can only sprint for three seconds. In this game, it's like about ten seconds or so, probably a bit more. So it's kind of like your uh, you have level five stamina uh, from the first game right away. In which they probably probably the main reason they made that change is because this game is now it's now sort of semi open world and so on. So there's a lot, lot more sprinting around. In which of course this is the speed run, so we won't be like doing all the side quests and all that. There's no actually. And need to do them. <laughs> what the hell? So here we're just seeing all the work of Stefano here. And there's actually a little cool thing. If you look up here, you can actually see Stefano in the distance. He's there watching you. One of the search team. There we go. So we'll just pass okay. by here. Someone tried to block the way out. Are in. <laughs> this is a scary bad bloke. <laughs> yeah, coming up here, we're just gonna do a bit of sprinting here. There's actually very nice visuals around these areas. You'll uh, we'll actually come back here a bit later. There's gonna be a boss fight later with Stefano. And you kind of just like briefly revisit this area. Right. Uh, yeah, so if, yeah, for you guys asking, yeah, Kuma difficulty is one hit kill mode. Any any damage you take from anything kills you. And uh, here's our first point where we can possibly die here. This is a stealth section. Or moment, I should say. Not really a section because it's over in two seconds, but yeah. <laughs> If Stefano sees us here, they'll kill us. But there's a little funny thing we can do at the beginning here. We can actually like stand up here and he still won't see me. What was that? Shit. So let's stand up here, sprint. Just crouch here, he still doesn't see me. I'm just let him pass by. So I'm doing very specific movement here. You you have to do everything here very exact here. You need to cover against the wall, slowly open this door. And once I get through the door here, we're able to uh, start uh, sprinting again. I gotta find a way out if I try to do anything like quicker than what I just did there, he'll hear me, and then he'll just he'll like teleport to you, and just it's over. He he he, uh, he just kills you then. But one one change as well in this game is a the game has a cover system, in which it's very nice for the uh, the stamina management because you're sprinting while you're covering to the wall. And it recovers your stamina as well. So you'll be seeing me use this a lot in the run. Okay. So here we just wait for an elevator. This, this elevator is a bit random how quickly it spawns in. 
That's okay. It, it, it actually can spawn quicker than what I just did. <laughs> Yeah, like I was pointing out before, like what well, what you're seeing here is just the this is just the tutorial stage of the game. The game will start getting more hectic as it as it goes on. And uh, if you're looking at the category, it says uh, Kumu uh, no major glitches. This this game actually does have a lot of insane glitches in it, but we're uh, we're not gonna be doing that. We're gonna be doing this game in a more you know focusing on. More mechanical side, I, I should say. Okay, so we need to turn around here. It's gonna be a picture that we need to grab here. This will activate a cutscene. There's a nice little detail here. You'll see like a woman here at the window. What the hell? You see her walking up there? And now it's gonna pan away and you're gonna see her like monster form now. <laughs> so this is the uh, the guardian. We're just gonna uh, run through her. <laughs> the, the sort of like intended way there of playing is you want to run around the little thing behind us and then, but you can actually just run through her. It takes a couple of seconds before she starts attacking you. So then yeah, we'll just run through here. And this door will like completely block her. This this part is kind of making you feel like you're in danger, but she actually doesn't break through the door until you click on the ladder there. So you can actually stay in that room as long as you like. <laughs> yeah, we'll just pass through here. <clears throat> so this is a Kuma mode. You do die in one hit, but there is exceptions to that. So there is a blade that will that will uh that'll come up here. Get rid of this rat. Let's see if I can actually take the damage here. Yeah, there we go, look. See my health is draining. It brings my health to one, but it doesn't actually kill me. The reason why is because they they never put like a death animation here, so they were just like, oh, we can't actually kill Sebastian here, so they'll just like let his his health just drop to one. <laughs> So you can't actually survive that in a cool move. I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't just um, like make you enter a death screen or whatever. It, it is easy to avoid the blade as well, so. Okay, we have a prompt here to pick through. You know, I love watching Akumu because you get hit once by like a stray like slap and you die, but getting a knife thrown in your chest and he just kind of walks it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so another thing to point out with this with this game is that. Uh, so they designed they designed this game from the reception of the first game. The first game got a lot of flack for the way it was designed, and it wasn't like optimized so much, uh, and stuff like you know, if you've played a Kumu in the first game, you'll remember like the bear traps and so on. Like every, every boss has a one hit kill, and so, so many things that will just like you know troll you to no end. Uh, so uh so yeah that's that's part of what they worked on with this game when they were designing it. The right so place. like there's no there's no bear traps and so on in this game. There's uh, a lot more freedom and so on. The, the game is still still difficult. Don't I don't worry, but it's you. like I don't want to say it's difficult in a different way, but you can definitely get away with a lot more in this game. So right now I'm just going to walk forward until my health recovers enough where we can sprint again. So I just put the my handgun and a heal in the quick slot. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we're just gonna manage our stamina here as we sprint. So one thing to point out with the so it, in, in this game you can oh, heal while shit. moving in this game, and town. another change is when you heal in this game, yeah. it also recovers your stamina. 
So, so there will be two points in the game where I will use a heal so I can keep sprinting for longer. In which they are way later in the run. But it, it is useful. Alright, dangerous enemy. What do we do? We run away. <laughs> so we're doing this thing here that I just call aim running. Uh, when you aim in this game, it stops your stamina from draining for like a couple of seconds. And the best point to use this is when you're in combat or you're like near. Like let, let's say you're sprinting and you're getting low in stamina. You want to use it when you're kind of getting near to a trigger or a door or whatever. So um, that's, that's another thing to point out. The stamina in this game, they... So when you're in combat or an enemy sees you, your stamina drains like three times as fast or whatever. It goes it goes all the way down in just like a couple of seconds. So so you'll see me use the aim running to get out of the most like crazy sections. Also, incoming here, you're going to hear like a scream. People think that this is Leslie from the first game or it's a theory. That, that little scream there, if you could hear it briefly. People think that's Leslie, but it's actually O'Neill here. <laughs> this character we're about to be. Mobius members. Also, we're about to do like a a spawn trigger, or we're about to kill an enemy that's gonna spawn in. Need to get in there. So we're just gonna crouch here and wait. This guy'll pop in, and we just self kill him. Thank you. So uh, this is sort of a uh, a slower strat to what you can do here. But it's just way, way more safer. There, there is a strat where we can just like immediately run to this door and get through. But there's an RNG chance of one of these uh, guys hitting you, so... So we're just gonna do uh, that strat there. Just to uh, get rid of them. So that's those two uh, lost down. In the, uh, the first game they're called the Haunted. In this game they're called lo the, uh, the Lost. There we go through here. And so here we're coming to like the meat of the game here. This this is a now a open world game. There's side quests, there's Witcher like, you know, dialogue where you can skip through the dialogue and you know if you click on the character you can talk more and activate other side quests and so on. See? So let's uh, skip all through this. Thankfully we don't need to actually click on them again. We just need to get through the dialogue and then continue on. We were trying to track them when we got attacked. Here, listen to this. So this is this character is O'Neill. He is a, a uh, Mobius soldier. You can also call him Morbius too if you want. Uh, he was uh, sent in here to uh, kind of whatever uh, Mobius is trying to do. I think they're. Tr I think it's like they're trying to recover uh, Stem and get and get Sebastian's daughter back. That's what the. That's the whole point of this game. That's why Sebastian is in Stem again because his daughter is like the core of the uh, the Stem. So uh, yeah, we're just collecting our resources here and we're clicking on the uh, the desk there. The reason why we do that is because you can field craft as well, but it costs more resources. But it's still something we're gonna do, like for time management. <clears throat> yeah, the the Morbin within. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, so it, it, in in the first game, when it comes to speed running and doing things like efficiently to beat the game as fast as possible, when you're playing a like new game, you want to be using your gel and so on to upgrade. In this game, we don't do that. Um, it's actually a time loss if you use gel to upgrade because it takes so much. It takes like so much time just to you know collect the gel and then go and upgrade. There's like a forced tutorial and so on. Uh. And there's two ways of upgrade, upgrading in this game as well. There's gel upgrades, and then there's uh, upgrading with weapon weapon uh, parts, which are for your weapons to upgrade. That's what we will be doing. That's going to be uh, the efficient way of getting through this. So we're going to cover against this wall. These enemies are actually going to see me here. Uh, so we're going to activate a scene here. We're going to get the, the crossbow. This is like... Probably the most like memorable weapon in the game. So 
So the enemies that were just following me there, they kind of stopped fo following me um, once they activate this cutscene, but they will come after me again once the scene's over. So I do gotta collect these, all this stuff here really quick and get out of here. Yeah, so let's just go over here. I don't want to run too fast. I just want to get around here. So once again, we're going to use the aim running just so my stamina doesn't go down all the way in two seconds. You can see it's draining insanely fast right now. It's already gone. We have we only ran for like two seconds there. So, <laughs> so this route I'm taking right now will get me certain resources when I get nails. Uh, nails are to craft explosive balls. They're going to be used for certain things. So we're going to go through here. I'm going to get this axe. It's going to be used a bit later. So everything I'm doing right now is very specifically for certain resources and to get to the main objective, you know, to progress the game. So this is not just like random what I'm doing right now. There is actually, because there is like a lot of optional stuff you can do. But obviously we're just going to collect everything that we'll actually need for the run. So yeah, we'll just go over here. <laughs> we'll just collect all this here. Yeah, so the weapon parts. Uh, specifically for this run, we are going to upgrade um, the explosive bolts and the smoke, smoke bolts. They're like... They're gonna be the two like most like useful thing for us uh, later on in the run, as well as we'll be crafting certain bolts as well, of course. So yeah, we're just using the cover system here. Right. So here we just th th so we want to get to this uh, this like uh, garage over here, and we don't want to sprint too soon here because these guys will actually hear me. Yeah, like, uh, if, if you're just joining us, we were just talking about that before. Uh, if you were playing Hi-Fi Rush recently, John Johannes made this game. This is also his, like, the game that he made beforehand. Uh, he, he also made the DLC for Evil Within 1 as well. What the... Are these lilies? Alright. So uh, the the main objective of chapter three here is is just following like uh, Lily's uh, prince, Sebastian's daughter. Lily, it's okay. Also, there's a possible glitch that can happen here. Uh, so like clicking on this door, uh, clicking on the hole here, or clicking on the doll that's in this room can trigger a glitch where you click on it and like nothing happens, but. The game still acts as if you did click on it, so... Oh, it actually happens. Lovely. <laughs> it's it's okay. This door will unlock in a second. Yeah, so we're, Sebastian is supposed to climb through the door there. So, we weren't supposed to, like... That door is supposed to be locked from the other side, or we can't enter her. We were supposed to unlock her from the other side. That was actually pretty funny timing. Then no, no, I said that. As I was, like, talking about it, I, it actually happens. Someone is chasing her. I should check out around back. <sighs> Thank you, See game. Window comes out. <laughs> uh, if if that happen, like that can happen when you click on the doll as well. And if it does, you can literally just leave, and it saves a bit of time. Which is kind of annoying. Obviously, you want it to happen every run, but it doesn't. All right, Lily. Where did you run off to? Okay. So after this scene here, if you run to the left side here, you just run where I'm facing right now, you'll trigger a cutscene where uh, enemies that, have, that are named, uh, what are they called? The spawn, I think. Another scene They're like on. these things with like I'm coming, heads on just both their sides. <laughs> but we're going to go this way to avoid that, which is uh, convenient because there will be actually... Uh, resources we can get from going this way and that leads us like right to where we want to go to so i'm gonna also equip my bolt here we're gonna be using that soon so 
So give me a fuse. The fuse will be for an electric bolt. And coming up soon is a very uh, troll part. Once we get to the... So we're aiming to go to a factory right now. That's where uh, Lily was hiding out. And getting into the factory is kind of a problem. There's certain, there's certain uh, enemies there that can be very trolly. So I'm hoping that they won't troll me. So we're just going to unlock this short. We're going to be escaping from this area through their... Uh, coming up pretty soon. So as we're just progressing here, we're just going to grab these resources. Weapon parts, there's smoke powder, the... Yeah, like the smoke powder is like... Let's try this again. You, you'll see later how overpowered they're going to be. And how useful they'll be for us. So we need to activate all this here to progress. Yeah, so incoming here, we're gonna run up here. There's, there's actually another, uh, yeah, another little area here we can get some, some uh, loot. And l like I said, everything I'm collecting here is needed for the run. I'm collecting some. There'll be like another nail and all we can get here. This whatever's in here is RNG. There's nothing in there. Okay, there can be like a, a nail or something in there. And uh, yeah, now we're just going to the. Now we're just going to activate the, uh, the main quest here. We still do got more prints to click on here before we can actually progress. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just want to say a big thank you. Uh, thank you guys for all uh, being here, coming in, you know, at this thank time. God. So I did have people say from my Twitch and YouTube and all that they would stop by. So thank you very much, guys. We appreciate you. It looks like she stopped here to hide. All right, here we go. First, first, like, first, first, like, difficult section of the game here. Like a nearly like a half an hour in. She must be in that warehouse. Let's hope I don't get trolled here. Lots of good places to hide in there, I bet. All right, let's see what this haunted's doing. They're just lost. So this guy's gonna see me, or is he not? I gotta watch for this guy because if he does see me, I have to stand still because he will he will end up walking to where I am right now. Whereas if I stand still, he'll go in a different direction, and then he won't see me at all. So I'm just going to watch out for him. So what makes this part so troll is uh, there are two haunted in this little spa here. And I need to be able to kill them with this one axe here, which can happen. But sometimes they like to troll and avoid it. So I just need to be prepared for that. All right. Nice. There we go. Very good. And I also need to grab this axe as well. Um... What makes this part scary is that when you, uh, the axe is not a guaranteed decapitation. So they can either not get killed. And one of them can either like avoid the axe as well. And you'll only kill one of them. And like during the animation of you trying to recover, they can actually grab you or hit you. So it's, it's actually like really easy to, to die there just because of the timing. And obviously we want to, we want to be doing that part as quickly as possible. Right. She probably crawled through here. Let's see. We enter the factory here. We get the resources there. We go through here. And yeah, we are collecting a certain amount of uh, weapon parts. There's She's weapon parts okay. around here as well. I just gotta Let's see. Her. We have 155. That's okay. I, I I usually want to have like. Probably about 170 by now, but that's okay. We'll still get more as we go. We'll have a little jump scare here. I'm just going to kill this guy. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, just kill him. I didn't actually need to kill him, actually. I could have just ran by, but I thought I'd play it safe.
Yeah, Akuma on the uh, the force game is is more difficult for sure. I, I don't want to do that. I just want to grab this heal, even though it is Akumu. I still want to grab just that other heal. We do want two heals. Um, you can see our health is low, and we're able to heal twice in the game. And when you do heal in this game, it recovers your stamina. So. Nice. There'll be two points in the I'll game where I will use the heal as I sprint, just so I can spin for longer. And um, let me see. I want to put the shotgun Another there in the shortcut. But where's Lily? Right. Him, the murderer with the camera, and the son of a bitch. Yeah, that loss deserved it for jump scaring us. So close. But, you know, we, we were minding our own business. We were we were having a good time. I think I got a saver. No more signals <laughs> coming into this communicator. I need to find another way. O'Neill. Not sure I can. Hey, we're just gonna him. cover a run here. I here as bad as I can't sprint to this part here, so we're waiting for a call as well. <laughs> O'Neill, it's the back. Also, a little funny thing I like to point out here with this. So, see the way we're jumping down this little hole here. I remember when this game came out, somebody called me a cheater for doing that. Like, because I didn't click on the ladder and climb down it, somebody called me a cheater, like, as if, like, I wasn't playing the game properly. And a little something like the point tail. <laughs> like, because obviously you would probably think the intended way would be to, you know, click on the ladder and jump or climb down it, but instead of that, we just hop down. All right, so incoming now. <laughs> Smile for me. Okay. Another possible death thing coming. Also, what I'm doing here, pointing the camera away, this is a little bit of a time save. You can see Sebastian's clipping through the shorter there. That happens if you face the camera there, Sebastian going out there. It's a little time save. Uh, so there are going to be three spawn enemies here. Uh, we're going to use an electric bolt to stun the first two, and then another one to use on the, the third one. Because the electric bolt only stuns two of them, so... Um, this is like more of a safety strat. Alright. Alright, let's see what the... Over there. So, so, like I said before, this is like more of a safe, a safer strat to do. Uh... I usually would only use the electric bolts on the first two, and then I would just shoot the other, the third guy, but sometimes that third guy does not like to get staggered when you do shoot him. Like, it, it usually is like, if you shoot them one time with any shot, they usually like stagger for a few seconds, but sometimes they just decide not to, so, so just to avoid that, we're just going to use two electric bolts there to get around them. Oh, see the floating knife there? <laughs> okay, so right now we're running back to O'Neill. And you can see me, I'm using the cover system here. This is, uh, you know, helping our stamina so it doesn't drain and we can just sprint for longer. Yeah, so when we get back here, there's going to be more resources, and we're also going to craft some stuff as well as we go to the, the next chapter. Not now. Union, most of, but they're packed. We call it, it doesn't fortune, but it's a, where's the, all mark looks like once you're in that should take, you could have, maybe so. Well, what's up with the, uh, the eye in the sky? Yeah, that is a thing by, uh, the antagonist Stefano. He, he has that, it's like his little thing that he puts in. You know, on the uh, the world, if you, that's what you want to say. You're not anything else. He's like a uh, he's like a crazy artist, and he you know he he's a camera. He takes pictures and all that. So it's it's meant to be like a giant like lens or whatever. 
Nice. So, yeah, we're just going to craft uh, some shock bolts and harpoons. We're going to be... We're gonna basic, actually, we're basically going to be using all those harpoons incoming. Yeah, this, this game has really heavy uh, Silent Hill vibes. There's even a... Uh, like a brochure and all that, you know, that's kind of like... Welcome to Silent Hill vibes to it. That kind of thing. I think it's like welcome. The the name of the so the name of this city is called Union. And the tagline is like welcome to Union. We're we're glad you're here or something like that. Hey. Okay. Uh, just trying to uh, manage my stamina here. So incoming here, we're about to run into an enemy called the Lament. It's like a giant, like, screeching lady, if that's what you want to call her. Uh, she has a one-hit kill. Like, and that... It's a Kumu, but, you know, she has a one-hit kill on all difficulties, but... Yeah, her main thing is that she grabs you. And then she just, like... She just, like, spews acid on your face. There she is over there. So we're just gonna crouch against here, we're just gonna run by. She also drains your stamina when she screeches. Okay. This guy's gonna pop up, but we should be able to just escape there. Probably should let Kidman know what's going on. <laughs> Kidman. Okay, so yeah, get more weapon parts here. And here we have the Smoke bolts. Okay. So this is the computer O'Neill was talking about. <laughs> so this computer is like traversing us through like different parts of the city and so on. <laughs> Go to the marrow operations. Okay, let's see. Let's grab you. Another, uh, another good section here. If if I can pull this section off in one try, I uh, this will be the most proud thing I've done in this run. If I can pull off in one try, I will be very happy. Because <laughs> it's 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 kind of like not that hard to pull off. It's just it's just very kind of specific timing of everything. But uh, let's see let's see what I can do. See if I can pull it off. Uh, so this section is just the, uh, you know, kill a lot of enemies and so on, but it's done in a very certain way. So we're going to use a bunch of harpoons. We're going to get rid of this guy. There's another guy sleeping here. All right, decapitate him. And once we uh, click on this door here, it's going to activate this segment. So we'll let things activate and we'll kill this guy as well. Might as well give it a try. So you can't actually cheese this part of the way. You, if you want, you can stay in this ladder for the whole thing because it is a time segment. But it does end quicker if you kill all the enemies. So, so that's what we're gonna do. It's it's literally like two minutes quicker if you kill all the enemies. Okay. So there are enemies coming for me right now from the ladder we just climbed up. So we're just gonna wait for these guys here. And he's shotgun on him. Him as well. Reload. Stomp on the both of them. Now we're just gonna wait for these guys. Hopefully I can get these guys together. Alright, there we go. That's all those three guys there. Security annex emergency lockdown disengaged. Here comes the uh, hysteric. It's gonna be a bit close. Nah, I didn't get the uh, to kill that wanted, but it's okay. Yeah, this is what I was scared of. This, uh... Uh... I'm low on ammo here, but... Yeah! Uh, I died at the very end of it. It's okay, though. I'll try again. The checkpoint's right here, so... I, uh... The reason why she wasn't dying quickly there, or as quickly as she should have is because of the shots when she's like staggered from the electric bolts. It's very specific. 
it's very specifically timed. Emergency yeah, we'll just do it again here. Thankfully, it's not like a long fight. Might as well give it a try. You know, I'll, I'll take a second try. If a second try works, I'll take it. But basically, uh, what's happening with the electric bolt there is... If I decapitate her head, I miss that shot, but the way it doesn't actually matter too much. You, so that that shot actually missed. F funny enough, you don't actually need to kill her. The second will still end, but she'll still be alive. I still can't do it without killing her. Or him, if it's it. Alright, so will these guys come up quickly together? Alright. Alright, Hysteric, show me what you're made of. Alright, there we go, look. That's what I was trying to do. So you can make her just fall on the ground there and stomp on her, and she's dead. The reason why it failed before is because um, she only falls on the ground if you do the decapitation animation while she's stunned. Alright. And uh, yeah, that's that segment done. So... So you can see why now I was saying I would have been so happy if I did that one try. And we literally did like 99% of it. <laughs> the last percent of it was just, no. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so specifically timed because you need to shoot her like exactly when she gets stunned. And it needs to be about four headshots. Right. We'll just pretend it was the first try. So we can just pass by these guys. So the last time we seen uh, O'Neill, he gave us a gas mask that's going to be used for this part. So this is the dreaded. Thanks, O'Neill. I'd never make it through without this thing. Flammable. Damn. That means I can't rely on my firearms. Okay, we'll sprint through here. Yeah, this is a first person segment. Okay, we just run by here. <laughs> so, yeah, we just cross through here. Incoming is another uh, lament, screaming lady. Alright, so let's switch to the bottles. The bottles are actually uh, really useful in this game, believe it or not. You'll see me use the bottles a few times. Right, hopefully she heard that. Yeah, alright. So I'll just crouch a little bit here. Right, go. I'm just gonna hope she doesn't uh, get me too... Oh, she might get me here, let's see. Hello. I have like a second to get out of here. Alright. <laughs> Go, 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 go! So you might be wondering, why didn't she get me there? <laughs> you might be asking, like, hmm, why didn't she, why wouldn't she grab me there? She she actually has to, like, do a certain animation and scream before she can actually grab you. So, so that's, that's why we... That's why I start off that part by using a bottle to bait her away and then, you know, crouch around her and walk. So by the time she gets to me when I'm doing the puzzle, you know, she has to do the the screech, the yell, and you have about probably about five seconds or something, four or five seconds before she can actually get you. So uh, pretty 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 close time in there, I have to say. <sighs> Thought I was a clicker for a second. <laughs> And uh, if you notice, I reloaded the thing there. Uh, there's like a checkpoint that pops up there when you end when you get out of there. 
and it basically skips you climbing up the ladder so so right now we're on our way to a city hall this is where uh this is where stefano is uh o'neill pointed us in this direction like how to get here and he was like okay you need to get through that gas area that we just went through and that will lead you to the uh, city hall here And uh, yeah, people were asking about the the big uh, eyeball thing in the sky. I think you'll see more of it here coming up. <laughs> okay, more weapon parts. We'll be actually using those pretty soon as well. Be City Hall. Gotta stop this guy and save Lily. Very nice uh, visuals here. Also, we have a slight uh, Silent Hill 2 reference here. Shit. What the fuck is that? Good question, Sebastian. <laughs> yeah, look, look, look at this little no here we get, and it says, Waiting for you. I can't turn back now. Waiting for you in our special place. So we're, we're about to uh, revisit, see again the Guardian from the beginning. You can actually see like her, uh, all the bodies in the ground there. <laughs> all right, here we go. So this is a uh, this is an intended boss fight, but there is actually uh, it's also an optional boss fight too. There are two ways of doing this doing this fight. So we're just gonna go in here, climb here, go over here. I'm gonna wait from here. Let's uh, shoot you. I'm gonna switch to the electric bolts. Set that down there. Oh, we'll get that. Yeah, smoke powder. So yeah, we're in combat, so my stamina will be gone in two seconds, so let's use the cover system. I use that, get that out of the way. Let's get this. There are tripwires here, but these are actually explosive bolts, so let's uh, collect them. So you can either kill the Guardian or run away from her like we are doing right now. This is like escaping her from her. This is also a uh, an achievement as well. So you can get an achievement for running away from her like this or fighting her. Don't have to worry about that thing for now at least. Let's see if I can find out where You'll see the guardian like multiple times in the game. So let's uh Let's do that. Get rid of these two loss. You can't, we can't actually kind of uh, like avoid those and uh, go here, but it's very risky. It's it's just bad to kill them. See, <laughs> so yeah, here we're going to do our first batch of upgrades. Let's go over here. We're going to, yeah, let's craft all these balls that we have here. We're specifically just crafting them here because it takes less resources to to craft them uh, at the desk compared to field crafting and so we just upgraded the explosive bolts there and the smoke bolts uh, throughout the whole run we'll only upgrade the explosive bolts just once there like we did um, and we will be upgrading these the uh, smoke bolts uh, two other times after this up to level three I think it is um, and that's going to be used for kind of multiple sections and the O'Neill boss fight. Which is like, probably, probably one of the I've toughest parts of the entire game, honestly. Wish I, could I, I would definitely say the O'Neill fight is like one of the highlights. I'm still gonna find you. 
e even if, even on like on even when even when you're, even when if you're not playing on a Kumu, you still actually can one hit kill you. Um, yeah, pass by us there was the uh, Obscura. This is something here that was made by uh, Stefano. What's this about? Okay. We got a little mini puzzle here, which is not... <laughs> it's not anything like, you know... Not anything difficult, you just gotta put the... The things here, and just point this at the at a camera. What's this? This camera's so old, not the same dress. Oh no! I pressed the other wrong prompt there. Okay. So here, to do these triggers here, we want to run to these pictures. Yeah, is it activated yet? Yeah. Once we activate this one, we want to turn around here. This is a like a, a time save here. Um, if you if you click on that note there while looking away from here, you'll trigger this little part here a bit quicker than normal. Usually you would have to run up to the other side of the room here, the, the hallway here. But I figured out if you're looking away from the trigger and you pick up the note, it just triggers that right away. You'll like, if you're playing this game normally, you'll notice what I mean. Here comes Bane Stefano. Okay, so I'm specifically facing here because this door will trigger if you're looking when you're you know if you're, you're looking away the door will appear then so. We want to time uh, when he stops talking. But what's he after? Uh, we'll just run through here. We need to uh, cover against the wall here and then just shoot that. That will close the door first to get this trigger done. And I'm just gonna like let my stamina recover just so we can run all the way down here. We're getting close to the obscure fight as well. A little uh, mini time save here. If you're if you if you like look away here from the trigger to the right here, you'll move a bit quicker here. Sebastian's like movement is like a bit slower there, but you can move a little bit slightly faster if you're looking away. Mm. Oh boy. Alright, so this incoming boss way. It's not a not really like a traditional boss way where it's like you kill it and it's dead. It's more of a a timed fight. This has to be the emitter. With a bit of a twist to it. Um So this little machine here we want the timer to uh, count down. Terminal. Must mean this communicator. So uh, I guess it's for destroying it or whatever. And the Obscura will use our camera to freeze the uh, the machine so it doesn't count down. So our objective is to damage her so she gets staggered. And then the timer will start counting down again. And... You know, usually you, you would be thinking, alright, let's use Electro Bolt Center to keep her staggered, but... We want to save resources. So we'll start off the fight. Do that. And now we're just gonna like try and bait her as much as possible. She has very a very specific like pattern of movement. Alright, so we'll just see what she does. Is she gonna sprint or is she gonna walk? Once the timer goes under 70 seconds, she'll start going for the machine. So she's gonna go for it any second now. Alright. So once she's running there, I'm gonna go there. And now we're we're gonna look at what she's doing. She's actually being a bit trolly, so I've got to be very careful here. Alright. So we're just going to bait her out. Oh, she's doing a foot, like a five hit combo or whatever here. She's going to turn around. Alright. 
Oh. Oh, I'm not getting any luck today. Yeah, I'm just gonna let her uh, do her thing. Let's see. Yeah, I usually I can just bait her for like the entire thing, but she just wouldn't cooperate. So we gotta do a certain amount of damage to her before she actually kills me. Right. I'm assuming it should only take a couple of shots now. Get her staggered. Come on. Do the thing. Please get staggered. Ah, there we go. Twenty seconds. One thing I'm wondering is, uh, will she be able to get back to to the machine in time? If it goes to about five seconds, we definitely should be fine. Yeah, we're we're fine. This is good. All right, not not the intended fight, but I'll take it. She also wasted all my hanging ammo. I'm wondering as well, uh, where is there I need Oh yeah, no, there's actually hanging I'm on the way back, so. Yeah, we should be fine. Yeah. We have got a challenge on our hands, folks. She uh she made me use up all my electric bolts. Uh I think I can craft one. I think I might have an extra one, I'm not sure though. If he's gone, he didn't leave Lily here. Where did he take her? Should give Kibben an update about this. Alright, and we're on the way back. Maybe I'll get a signal outside. Yeah, we can get. Yeah, we just. I think I just need. Uh, yeah, we have two fuses. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe these bastards use Lily like some kind of science experiment. And then they have the nerve to send me in to clean up their mess. It's like some kind of sick... <laughs> Let, let's go Ireland, yeah man. Ireland represents... A, uh, a, a potato speed running the evil within. At uh, just under 4am uh, in the morning. <laughs> nothing like a man, nothing like, like a... Thanks. <laughs> Gotta figure out where he took her. Think I might have just figured it out. Not doing a very good job of hiding. It's almost as if he's taunting me. Well, if it's a fight he wants, so that he's thing of the sky there in the distance, that's like a theater. And uh we're gonna be gone. That's gonna be like the next like open world section of the game. O'Neill. Alright, chapter six. <laughs> hey, we'll just hop down here. Just gonna remember not to get this hanging ammo here coming up. Yeah, so that, that fight, like I explained before, that, that fight made me use more resources than I wanted. I wanted to, to leave that fight with, like, at least one electric bolt. Specifically because there's a Hysteric uh, coming up in a little bit. And I need to, like, be able to stun her in a certain way, or it's going to be, like, really difficult to get around her. But, uh, yeah, we have two electric bolts, so it's fine. This must be the passage I was talking about. Lily? Oh, this place is messing with my mind. Yeah, we'll just sprint here, get through these enemies. Yeah, coming up here, we're gonna get more story and Sebastian with his family. Uh, you know, the story in the first game is, it was presumed that Sebastian and his wife, Moira, they lost their kid in the fire. But it actually ended up being not true. It was actually like, 
um, something that that was faked by Mobius, the you know the evil organization the of these games, and that's why Sebastian is here in the first place. Let's see, we'll get more of that that story here. Society abducted Lily and staged her death. Do you realize how crazy? Oh boy. This is certainly like a new enemy. I love the other uh, dialogue Sebastian says here. We're gonna do the complete opposite. Good God, look at the size of that thing. Maybe I can sneak past it. Yeah, maybe we can sneak past it. All right. <laughs> I gotta get the hell out of here. Just run through. And that thing we just ran by there, it's gonna grab us here. We need to shoot it like, I think it's like, what is it, four, four, four or five times on uh, Kumu? <laughs> Thanks, game, for not making me waste ammo as well. <laughs> they, for whatever reason, they make it, make it so you, you don't waste ammo shooting it there. They do that in the, uh, the first game as well. There's a trap in the mansion segment this place was supposed to be in the first game, and you don't waste any ammo when you shoot it. They do the, they do the, uh, the same thing there. <laughs> Didn't want to grab that. We just want to open this. So then coming here, we're going to be introduced to uh, Yukiko Hoffman, another uh, Mobius uh, soldier. So these uh, Mobius soldiers, most of them are not like bad people, really. They're just people that got, you know, like wrapped up in the situation. So they're sending. So she she really is on our side. That means we dog, but in this sec, this is your psychopath. But they they don't care. Can you think of? Yeah. Then maybe the destroying. I'll keep that. He's holding. Right. Let's pay. Are we still regardless? Feel free to. Okay. So here, we'll just grab this uh, gunpowder here. Mm. Then coming now, we're going into the next like open world section. You know, er originally they actually were going to put like both open world sections to be like one big big open world or whatever, but they decided like. To make the to to like split up the open world to make them like to, or you know the first part of it is chapter three and then you get to chapter six it's the, like the next you know section but originally it was supposed to be just one big open thing but they thought it'd be better to uh, split it up. Okay, we'll just get more resources here. And uh, yeah, we I I saw your comment area, Cor Corey. You were you were dev in this All game. Right. The theater. Very nice. I'm coming for you. All right. All right. That guy besees me, but when you enter bushes in this game, you're essentially John Cena. So yeah, they they can't see us anymore. So we can just like run around here through the bushes, and we're good to go. Uh, Lily's inside there. So yeah, to activate the next chapter here, we need to click on these uh, pictures. This like progresses the game. You did not appreciate my <laughs> respect art, huh? Time to put Hoffman's theory to the test. And if you're so, what what I was talking about earlier about a hysteric here. 
that's actually incoming here, so let me get two of these electric bolts. So uh so when you're you're in, when you're in combat, these hysterics usually can avoid the, the stun from the electric bolts. Like they will just completely ignore it. When you, when they're in combat. So what we're gonna do is they don't ignore when they're not in combat. So I need to specifically set this before she sees me. There we go. I need to set it like exactly when I turn around the corner there. Because the second like she sees me and she enters the animation of like screaming at me before she attacks, she'll just completely avoid the the electric bolt stun. So I need to like time that very fast. Hey. So we just got a fuse there. Another electric bolts <laughs> coming handy. So this is his art? It's just a photo. I'm gonna stab the shit out of you. Oh. So yeah, chat, how does everyone... I hope you guys are uh, enjoying the run so far. Been a fun run so far. Yeah. And uh, back again, we have Ob Obscura here. Where the intention here is we need to get a key to escape here. All right. And she get me close to that art. So she Obscura's movement changes wherever you move there. So I'm specifically moving to the left a little bit there. And that made her like go to that a certain spot for me. Um. Hey. She might. She might actually still hit me here. Let's see. All right, there we go. Should be fine now. Made it. Hopefully, I'm done with those things for a while. All right, so here we need to avoid these uh, these electrical trip wires. Uh, there's there's like two different rooms of this. There's one here, and then in the next painting, there's another one. You want to go left on this one, and then go to the right side on the uh, the next one that we do. Okay, Hoffman. I'm well, just gonna cross through here. You're right about destroying these things. Here we go. And it is a Kubo mode, so you know you tip on you tip off any of them, it's over. <laughs> you lose. Destroying that freak's work was actually therapeutic. Hey, but I'm not done yet. One more. So now we're on our way to a diner or a tap room. The, the name the name of this place is called the Devil's Tap Room. Now we're about to up to here and um, we're about to run into the guardian again there's like a couple of guardians that show up here in this open world section yeah there she is over there in the back there's another one of those like big tentacle things that's attached to the uh the big yeah, eye in the sky right. oh yeah there's actually a uh there's actually another thing we can get here yeah another fuse get this so the metal pipes are for the harpoons. Hey. Yeah, the devil's own tap room. You can hear the guardian laughing outside. Hey. finish this there's evil within too i whip man i wish i could show that easter egg it takes too long sadly <laughs> if there was one easter egg i would have loved to have been able to show that in this you're becoming art you 
shall be part of my obscure so for, for you guys that don't know there's an easter egg in the game where if you go back to chapter three the open world section you can actually go back to o'neill there at a certain point and S sebastian has a dialogue with him and o'neill is saying something like sebastian what are you doing here it's crazy uh, and there's there's evil out there and then sebastian's like well there's evil within too something like that some crazy line of that <laughs> and then and then they look at the camera as well they both are like facing each other but then the camera and they're looking at the camera then it's pretty hilarious also very uh, specific movement here You can hear the enemies glitching out there. So yeah, you can do that. You can just run by the enemies there. <laughs> Does, uh, if you want to do that, like you, you, you literally just want to run straight to the to the door. If you waste any time, they'll get you. Let's cross through here. Be careful. Not gonna take any risks here. Uh, let's stand up here. Alrighty, so now we're on to the, the theater. That's what we were unlocking here. It was like two paintings blocking the theater and we had to destroy them to get rid of them, so... That's both of them. Should have done the trick. Better Thanks. The, the Guardian's right out there. We want to. We, we actually do want to wait a couple of seconds here, or she will see me. I right, just go there. Yeah, she. Even though she was facing there, she won't see you. Her like vision is like to that other side. So. All right. So there will be a bunch of enemies here. I'm hoping they won't actually hit me. They usually don't, but you never know. I could. I could get marathon luck here. So we're just gonna calmly walk through here. Take our time here a little bit. I could, I usually would actually just sprint through here, but I want to get as much uh, stamina as I can here. I right, run through here. Yeah, just go onto the wall there. Here we go. And once you make it to the theater here, they'll back off. They just, at this point, they're like, ah, never mind. <laughs> we'll just leave them. Okay, oh, uh, that's, there's a possible crash that can happen here. The game is, the game is known to crash at certain points in the game. And it's when you enter the theater here, gotta be in here somewhere. the game has a possible chance of crashing. I was actually thinking, uh... I literally haven't had the game crash in such a long time of me. But then I was like, if there was such a perfect time for the game to crash on me, it would be now. It would be a marathon run. I really hope you're not chancing fate here, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. Where did it crash? Well, literally when you enter the theater there, before you kick okay, the, okay. the second door there. Somewhere around that. I say, is about to come up? Yeah. It's it, it can happen like when you click on the first when you the door that enters the theater and then the the other just before you get to the other door then it can that's the possible chance that it crash at. Uh, I think there is other parts where it can crash. I can't think of them at the moment. All right, so now we are on our way to the Stefano boss way. S sadly, this is the end of the actual good antagonist of the game. Also, uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, anyone? That's what this section uh, makes you think of.
Alright, so for the most part, you can just, like, run through all this. You can actually just run here right away, but, like, Sebastian's animation when he jumps down there is random. He'll either do, like, a, a fast animation or a slow one. So I'm just gonna wait a second here just to make sure it doesn't matter what animation I get. Alright, so we do need to wait here. We can't just run through this. This is something you have to wait through. Let me just go there. Okay. Now we can just uh, sprint through here. <laughs> and that's the end of this section. So the Stefano boss fight, sp specifically on a Kubo and all that, requires a very specific timing. We're going to be using a bunch of explosive bolts and shotgun rounds. All right, where the fuck did you go? Okay, so let's collect these resources as we go here. And this is the... we were here at the very beginning of the game, now we're just like sprinting through here really quickly. Come along. This is leading us to the fight. My next piece, I actually really love all this, this is actually so like, just like cinematic. Man, they should have had Stefano like last until the end of the game. Alright, so let's get the uh when I get the explosive balls ready. Alright. So at the very beginning of the fight here, we're gonna set down explosive balls and hopefully they don't blow me off. There's a tiny chance that can happen. And everything I'm doing here is very specific. Like me facing down is gonna move his position. Alright. So I just shot him there as he despawns. Alright, that's the first phase. Nice. That's a good first phase. I've had enough of this. So here we're gonna pre-set down two explosive bolts. He will spawn here. In a bit. So I'll just set down those there. And once 3 has come down, he's going to spawn again here. Alright, set that there. All right, he didn't spawn where I wanted him to. It's okay, though. Oh. I actually could have gotten two shotgun shots at him there, but it didn't happen. Alright. Let's see what he does here. Is he gonna run at me? Philistine. Philistine. Alright, what's he gonna do now? Is he gonna do the multiple teleports or. Yeah. So we just gotta wait here. Alright, one more hit it should be. Nope, two more hits. Alright, and that's, that's the final fight. Uh. This is a slightly... we could have done this fight faster than this, but I, I still consider that good. That's still a fast enough fight. It's mostly just... Uh, you can, like... It, you really can actually get, like, the same thing happening every time, but... Because he... The, depending on how much damage he, he's taken, you can predict where he's going to teleport for the most part, and where you're standing as well. Okay. Where's the mirror? So now we're gonna, since I'm low on shotgun ammo, let's craft three of them. Let's craft all the bolts that we have here. And now we're gonna upgrade the smoke bolts again. Uh, you know, f funny enough, I've never, uh, I don't even know how much exactly like uh, weapon parts we need for the entire run. I, I just know specifically where to collect and what ones to collect to get enough. <laughs> but I think it's around like the 700 range or something. The The final upgrade that I will be getting will cost another 350. Where is so that plus place? the other upgrades that I've done. I think it's safe to say uh, you're, we're using about probably 700 weapon parts in this run. Whoa. 
because we do upgrade the explosive bolts as well. So now we're being introduced to Theodore. He's the main antagonist of this game. Uh, he's like this, like, you know, preacher or whatever. And you'll see, like, the religious symbol in the game. It's the same one from the first game. If you played the first game, you'll recognize this uh, symbol. It's the exact same L1. Okay, see if we can get anything from those boxes. So we're in a prison here. We need to collect a crank here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna just get rid of him. Just get a free uh, stealth kill on this guy. So let's go get the other uh, crank. Or the, you know, the valve for the crank here so we can escape. So you can see there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of prisoners and all here. They're gonna break out on our way back here, so... And we're going to be doing a very specific strat to do this as quickly as possible. Which will involve using a electric bolt and then a smoke bolt and very specific movements. The, the important thing to point out in this game is when you use the cover sprinting, it silences your footsteps. So that'll come in handy at the end of this part. So we'll set that there. Go over here. Put the smoke bolt there. I have a sprint over here. We'll sprint to here and use the cover. Right, so we should be good now. I'm, I'm waiting so I can turn the camera here because I want to see where the enemies are. <laughs> All right. So you can see him over here now. The hysteric there. So she heard my footsteps initially, but I stopped sprinting and then I, I uh, covered to the wall to finish off the sprinting. So she didn't actually hear me go to the rest of the way. So now we can just escape. That was actually really good. And of course we set down the, the, the smoke bolt in the other spot so the, the loss would run into it so they can't get to me. Incoming as well, we're going to be introduced to another new enemy called the uh, Disciple. They're like these guys that are just like engulfed in flames. You can really see the, the story of the game now gets really like psychological. It's actually one of the big like changes from the original. I guess you could, could say the original is uh, psychological as well. <laughs> but w w one of the things I do love in this game is just everything with Sebastian's story. And I really love the side quest, you know, that goes all around Sebastian's psyche and, you know, his trauma from the first game. I, I always thought that was so well done there uh, in this. Also, you can see the message there to the right there that says "Feel him fine." Who are you? I think that's I think that's a message that's what in one of the Simpsons me? episodes, the Treehouse of Horrors. You cannot change your past. You can only embrace it. Go toward it. Don't avoid it. Is that Lily? Okay. So we're going to be fighting three of these guys. We need to kill three of them for progress. And we're going to start off by using a harpoon shot to this guy's leg to knock him down. So then we can stomp on him to kill him. And then there will be two guys in, our, in the distance here as well. I do that. Right, stomping them. We're gonna use a electric pulse. We're also gonna switch to a bottle here. I'm gonna see which one. Uh, right. Oh, 
Why are you picking up the gel on me, Sebastian? Alright, I gotta do this again, it's fine. Right, he's... If he, uh... When he's sprinting... Nope. You're not getting away with this! Alright. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to bottle him in the face there. Yeah, when they're doing that little charge, whatever, they're... You, you can't, like, stagger them with the bottle in the face. So I have to be, like, really careful there. Okay, so we're just waiting for a trigger here. So we're just going to pick up the resource starting in this area. Alright, puzzle time here. Yeah, we got a puzzle here, and after this section is a, uh, a cabin fight. Very, uh, you can't have, like, something that's, you know, something that Sinjo Mikami would be involved with. You can't have a cabin fight without it. Alright, so we're just gonna turn this here. We're basically just turning these to the right here at a certain point. Certain cranks will turn two of them. So we're just going to do this. This really is nothing to this puzzle, it's just basic movements. Alright, and we just move the last one. So yeah, incoming here, we're going to be introduced to another new character, uh, Torres is her name. She's another uh, Mobius uh, soldier. And uh, another thing as well, she's also another important story detail. She's also the one that set the fire to Sebastian's house. You know, that supposedly killed his daughter. She's the one that took, their, took uh, Lily when she was a baby. And then he made it look like that she died in a fire. But she's not like... You know, she's not like one of Mobius. She's not like evil. She was just like forced to do it. Yeah, so incoming here. Torres is going to help us out in the cabin fight. Very, 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 very much like, you know, the first game's cabin fight. Uh, Resident Evil 4, you know, where you have like Louise helping you. We're mostly going to be using our handgun, shotgun, and uh, harpoons. Okay. Right. Right, let's see what this guy's doing. Nice, that was good. All right, I was actually happy I got rid of him early because I was actually kind of low on uh, there. Hey, Torres is helping us out. Okay. Too many times to count. Tor Torres is not messing around. She's she, she's making things happen. Alright, so we're just waiting for the next uh, wave of enemies here. So we're just gonna be doing like a mix of using the harpoon and the shotgun. Can I get? Nice, I got both of them together. Very nice. Alright, let's see what these guys are doing. I don't know what this guy's gonna do. Alright. Okay. So. Yeah, alright. So we're gonna set that there. One of the, uh. Lost are gonna run into that electric bolt on me. Okay. So now I'm just gonna watch out what this guy's doing. And another hysteric is incoming. Oh, she actually got me. Oh my god. Uh, 
So, well, what went wrong there is that I usually want to be like close to the door or the, you know, where she comes from so I can hit her right away, but I just couldn't get rid of that other loss quick enough, so. Alright. Unfortunate timing, but we just go again. Too many times to kill. Oh. This is a Kuma mode, yeah. We are speedrunning this on a Kuma mode. I think we walked two deaths now. Unless I'm misremembering. Nice shot! I don't want to use more shotgun ammo. I would like to save as much shock and ammo as possible. Can I get him? Yes, I can. Even when, even like, if you get the the prompt quick enough, you'll still like stomp on them. Two hits kills you. One hit kills you. And any damage you take in your devs. That missed apparently. Now you can see how chaotic this can get actually, uh when you just can't get like control of the enemies, this starts happening. Alright, so let's just see what's going on. Is he dead? Okay, he's down. Shit, they're everywhere. Don't let them hang up. Hey, set this down here. All right, so we should be having a, a easier time here. All right, <laughs> as you can see, you can it can be a complete one eighty if I just get better timing. Hey, what the hell is that noise? Oh shit! Watch out! All right, so we're just waiting, and we have two uh, two of these guys incoming. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just watching what this guy's doing. I want I just wanna waste all my hanging ammo on this guy. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Alright, that's the cabin play. I was, I was I needed to be like as careful as possible because I used way more resources. That I wanted to, so. Right. Come on, we gotta keep moving. The game should. Uh, I'm hoping the game. The, the game. There is usually hanging ammo outside, so I'm hoping there's something. Any sort of uh, shock and ammo will do. Thanks. And who are you? Yeah, that's the yeah, that's the cabin fight. One of the toughest parts question. of the entire game. It's I very time specific. It gets very uh, headache, hectic. On a whim. Take whatever you need inside. I'll be out here. Try to stay quiet. Mr. Rad, could be uh, boxes here. At least yep. tell me how you know my name. Gedman told me to keep an eye out for you. Gunpowder. Uh, I'll take the gunpowder. If the plan went to shit, and here you are. So. Wait, I'm lost. What? Wondering if we killed any enemies like at a certain here. spot here. And then, taking Mobius down for good. Wait a second. What is it? Shit. Let me guess. The way back to your safe house? Yeah, we've a good amount of uh, downtime here. Yeah, the... Wait, you would definitely have... Re that definitely, that section would definitely is reminiscent of the first game's like chapter of ball. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Uh, I, I, I think we would. I think it's easier to say, yeah, the even within one has a more nasty captain fight. It's uh. One of us has got a lift while the other one crawls through. You know, like the captain fight in the first game is like sort of two phases to it. 
And there's no checkpoint through the whole thing. But hey, this that, that cabin fight's pretty lengthy too, and that doesn't have a checkpoint as well, so... You need a break after that, old man? Come on. I'm not that old. So you're telling me Kidman had a plan to take out Mobius all this time? Actually, it was your wife's plan. Wait, Myra? So yeah, well, so one of the things to point out with the story as well is the change in the story, yeah. Mobius. Cause this is ridiculous. You know, the first game story really is not even about Sebastian. You know, Sebastian is just you know it's just someone that happens to be there. Like he is he is the protagonist, you know, he is the guy we're playing as, but he really is a pawn and everything. He's like expendable when it comes to Mobius and all that. I knew the only way to take them down was from the So when it comes to the first game, the story really is about Rubik, it's about Mobius, it's about you know everything that's going on with that Kidman as well. They they really are like the forefront of the story. And that's that's why they they chose that they chose like to to go with more of a a different approach with the story of this game. They wanted to focus on Sebastian and his family and so on. So that's why we don't see like Ruvik and or continuation of what happened. You know what happened from the first game like uh, yeah th there's there's actually a lot of people that think like joseph is dead and so on because you did you you see like you see all the little details in the dlc from the first game so if you if you have not played the dlc from the first game you need to because there's very important story details you know you, you see like joseph being taken away right who else was you know from the end of the Just first game us. me kidman myra and theodore theodore mm. father theodore father theodore i just call him theodore wallace you know him we've met but he doesn't want to see they're also a very short as well so himself <laughs> tried to talk me into hunting down myra too he's the one who screwed everything up how is this whole thing supposed to go once Myra and Theodore got Lily, Theodore and I were going to... Uh, yeah, Joseph is alive and well. The question is in what capacity right now. ...to make sure we got out of STEM safely. Shit, that was supposed to be easy. Nothing's ever easy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like this, this game confirms it as well. Uh, if you collect all the slides, the final slide is Kidman telling jo or Sebastian that Joseph is alive, so... But it's also cool that if you have played the DLC, you'll notice as well. Okay, so incoming. We are being introduced to the uh, Harbinger enemies. These are guys wielding uh, flamethrowers. So, so cool detail. These guys are actually originally going to be in the first game. They're, they're in the concept art for the first game. But then they decided to put so them in the, the second game house. then. I wouldn't put my safe house in the open like that. It's hidden. But we've got to get past those things to get there. Yeah, so so we're aiming to get to uh, Taurus's, uh, is her hideout here. Okay. And basically, there is a prompt we need to click on to get out of this area. And you need to be out of combat and so on. So, we need to do a very specific strat to get out of here. Alright. So we're just going to run around these guys. I'm going to heal. This will recover my stamina as I'm sprinting. Then we'll just go over here. Alright. So we'll put that there. And once you run to this car here, uh, Torres will enter us. A certain phase or whatever she'll teleport here to us here we go and basically we if we're lucky enough here we should be like out of combat here very uh, specific move we got to do here to get to make this happen yeah we're just waiting for Torres to hit there we go we might see yeah, we yeah they don't even know that I'm here at the moment 
And there's the trigger. Well, that's one way to do it. Usually you'll be taking a long time killing these guys and getting out of there, but you can also, you know, if you sprint to the to the exit there, set down the smoke ball where I did, and then run to the car that'll trigger Torres to enter a certain state where she'll like teleport and her her health will also recover. And uh yeah, no we can just make it so that we can escape the there. Safe house runs a close second. Listen. Don't freak out at the amount of explosives I got in here. Th things can go wrong there. Sometimes they will follow us all the way. If they do, I'll just set down another smoke bolt so they to make sure they don't all like get to me. So what are we gonna do about? And I'll just like take out the ones that got closest to me. His hide. I should be. What? Yeah, she's she's hot and he'll if I can. So the yeah. How are you gonna? O'Neill, but I better. Right. She's. Did more. Good. She's the good and her. That is. So what's the, the bad and he needs. Damn. I'll send some Kimi post. I know. I trust. Okay. Time to get down to business. Only a lot of scenes to skip through here. Come in. Huh. Something's wrong. I gotta try and find him. You should stay here and get your explosives. Oh, nice. We got the, uh, we got the freeze bolts here. Theodore. And another returning bolt from the first game. Yeah, there's a Mobius computer in that room. It'll take yeah, oh yeah, that's what so I actually forgot to talk about the uh, bolt differences. Uh, so in this game, you you don't we you don't have the smoke bolts in the first game. And in the first game, you have the flash bolts, which are removed in this game. Right. Let's hope the marrow is still there. In which you're about to see the power of the smoke bolts, other than what I showed already. <laughs> Another big change was the removal of the matches. Instead of the match in the game, we have the the stump. I would say mo mo most people always. I see people talk about all the time about, uh, you know, uh, man, I wish she didn't remove the uh, the matches. For me, I've always seen the the matches being more of a like it fit the theme of the first game. You know, the heavy, it was like a heavy theme with the first game being about fire and so on. You know, Ruvik losing Laura to the fire in the barn. Sebastian, you know, losing his daughter to the fire. Maybe that's why I couldn't contact O'Neill. Hoffman's safe house is nearby. I should check up on her. Hoffman, you here? So here we're just tracking what happens to Hoffman here. Okay, we'll just collect that here. Another electric bolts. So yeah, we, we need 350 weapon parts. We have 400 now, so more than enough. Uh, after we get this last smoke ball upgrade, the next upgrade we'll get will be upgrading the sniper rifle. Now, if if you're playing, if you've played this game, you might remember you have to craft the sniper in chapter three. Uh, if you if you if you actually don't do that, the sniper actually appears in chapter thirteen, and you can pick you can just pick it up. So we'll be picking it up, yeah, pretty soon. Looks like they had extra security for this. In a couple place. of chapters. Alrighty, so let's uh, do some more crafting. So that's that's like the base of this run is just crafting like whenever we get to these save rooms, just craft everything at once. Because it costs less resources. Alright, we got the final smoke ball upgrade, aka I like to call this the O'Neill Killer upgrades. <laughs> this this upgrade is specifically for O'Neill. And you'll see why coming up soon. these tanks one of my uh, favorite sections of the game here I, I love this whole part this whole like lab section there's also a morgue here as well
Okay, we'll just cover around all this. Huh. Can't pass through without one of those chips. Gotta be one around here somewhere. Yeah, so run away to get one of these chips. This is all the way in the back here. So yeah, once we once we like activate this here, everything's gonna go awry. Things are gonna go crazy. There's gonna be a lot of enemies on our way back here. Okay, let's see what happens. There's gonna be there's gonna be a hysteric. There's gonna be a uh, a lament, the screaming lady, and a bunch of like loss as well. So we'll be doing very certain things to get around them. And there's also like the the main door that we need to escape from. You need to like run to the door to trigger a certain thing and then it takes like I think it takes like a good like ten seconds for the door to open. Oh, thank God he's already dead. So we're gonna do a very specific to things to get around that. And avoid like actually having to like kill all the enemies. Let's see. Run through here. It's gonna be an enemy in our way here. I'll just shock on this guy. There we go. The enemies are on the lower floor, but they haven't really aggroed yet until you like really get down here. So I'm doing more of a safer strat here. This is there, there is a like a way faster strat than what I'm doing here, but this is this is still uh, pretty quick as well. The uh, the quicker strat just requires so much precise uh, timing. So I'm just gonna. He just stealth here. This is the door I was talking about. So let's walk here. You can see the lament there. We're just gonna wait here a second. Alright. Let's go. And that's that section done. The the faster strat will be me literally sprinting up to the door. And I will do like a direct electric bolt hit on the lament, which stuns her for like 15 seconds or something. It's very specifically timed. All right, here we go. Here comes the O'Neill fight. This is very specific as well. He might, he might actually kill me here right at the beginning. Hopefully he doesn't. He does a certain attack, which can. Uh... All right, good. So yeah, we're just gonna do this over and over. It's all very specifically timed. We want to move them to a certain spot because there is fire around this area and it can't actually kill me, so I need to be far away from it. That's it. I'm done you. And that's activating this cutscene as phase one. Oh god, yeah, I messed up. I. So, I don't know if you noticed it, but what I did there was I set down the smoke bolt and I accidentally picked it up again because I was trying to click on to stab him again. Which is kind of annoying. Why does the game have to do that to me? Hopefully, he doesn't actually get me again. Now he's doing the same thing. Uh, I don't think I can get away with this, can I? Alright. Oh, how the game, how I'm gonna like, what the game's gonna react with here. Let's just do this again and see what happens. That's it. I'm done playing <laughs> this is actually the last thing I thought would mess up at me as well. <laughs> ah, no, nah, he got me. I, he, I usually can't just get him there, but he got me there. Yeah. I, I shouldn't be surprised. O'Neill is just like super troll in this game, so. It's all just specifically timed. Yeah, he's doing the other attack. You need to be super fast, by the way, doing these stabs. Uh, the smoke literally goes away by the time I click on the, the third stab. Alright. Alright, hopefully this is it. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of getting memed by O'Neill. Uh, 
Yeah. All right, let's try again. It's fine, we'll get it. See, uh, it is actually this precise. Because I, I don't want to wait too long. Because he, he can't actually hit me as well doing that. Okay. Oh, I don't want to do that. That's not good. I'm going to reload again. You, you don't want to do like a stab from, from behind there because that's a slower animation. Man, we're, we're getting all the uh, the bad luck here. You're not stopping me forever, O'Neal. <laughs> Alright. Man, this, this is supposed to be just like a one and done and outie. Alright. I know, I know this looks rough, but I promise you, I usually do this consistently. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Did I? Uh, I didn't think I would do it that time. I, I don't know why I keep doing that or making it happen. Like, I'm trying to time, like, clicking on them for when, like, it actually goes off, which usually does happen. Let's try again. The, f the funny thing is, the most thing I was actually worried about with this fight was the beginning there. I was afraid he was actually going to kill me with that initial uh, shot. This is not the thing I was worried about at all. <sighs> I promise this is not my first playthrough. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully we're good now. I'm a little bit worried, actually. We're so close to that flame. Alright. Alright. Okay. Okay. Oh. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> I have marathon luck. It doesn't always go the best. Oh my. That, that was... Like... Honestly... It, it's O'Neal. He's literally like the... Probably the toughest part of the game, so I think that was probably a good showcase of his, you know, how difficult he can be and how specifically that is timed. But Theodore wants Lily for himself. We got it, man. We we got the the strat that I was in, intending with. So, but you really can't see how fast you can do that fight. I can't let that happen. But yeah, it takes six stabs to uh, kill O'Neill. <laughs> In which, if you upgrade the smoke balls to level three, you can get three stabs off, and that's like, what is it? you know, get some done with the. It's the two phases done like that quickly. I'm not totally sure. But I for speedrun wise, it's like very. It's done there. very specifically timed. O'Neill said to destroy it, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I know just. So hopefully, that's like the end of the trolley so now for the run. You know, I have <laughs> Good. Got it. the worst is over. Let me know when you're good to go. Okay. Is that enough? Like tenants. I'm good. I'm going to check out the equipment in the other room. Good luck, you two. Sebastian and Torres are do a very smart move here. They're waiting for an explosion to go off. And what did they do? They stand like okay, right in front go. of it. Operation kick ass happening in three, two, one. Are you okay, Torres? Torres? Where'd you? Oh, this is uh This is one of my favorite parts of the game. The uh, the bottomless pit. Go there. Another uh, new enemy we're going to be introduced here, which is called the Glutton. They're big. They're they're big boys, and they explode and they one hit kill you. Well. Oh if you're playing on hard, like even if you're not playing in Kumu, they usually will uh, one hit kill you. They're designed to just like run into you and explode. 
we'll see him uh, incoming here. I'm just going to run through here. So we're just going to do the aim running so my stamina doesn't drain in two seconds. So I'm going to avoid this guy's grab. Set down an ex a uh, smoke bolt there. And there's the glutton there in the back. He's going to run into the smoke bolt and explode from it. Here we go. So that's actually something that usually will only happen if you upgrade the, the smoke bolt. He won't... He if, if you don't upgrade the smoke bolt, he usually will just like run through the smoke and kill you. Uh, that's usually only a thing in combat. If if you... Like let's say you're playing a classic, classic difficulty where you can't upgrade. You can uh, pre set down the smoke bolt while he's not in combat and that will make him explode as well. So that'll be like the classic difficulty way of doing that. Not like you. <laughs> she tried to tell you that you were too stupid to listen. No. No. No, this isn't right. Alright, so we're gonna we are going to move in a certain way here. There is there is a spawn enemy here. Well, there's actually a couple of them here. There, you can kind of see him there. He's gonna like pass through there. He, he's like he's like going back and forth here. So my goal is to just avoid him. All right, there's gonna be another spawn enemy here as well. Now he's he gone back there. Nice, and we just got a clean run through here. <laughs> so this is like a uh, Lily here in the call here, but it's it's Theodore messing with our head, and you know he's trying to manipulate us. Very like Dark Souls arena area here. Lily, is it really you? <laughs> Alrighty, progress on here. One of the, uh, the biggest uh, downtime segments here. Oh no, Torres! Our waifu! What's the difference between no major glitches and any percent in this game? Uh, so there is a there is a glitch in this game where you can launch Sebastian in the air and he just flings across the map. You got so, you know, you can fling across like most of like the areas and so on, and you know, go completely like out of bounds. So, what's wrong? So that's that's why I just put that as like the category. It's making you delirious, Myra. That's that's a little something they did they did actually patch that out of the game, so if you do want to run that you do have to down patch the game. I'm home. How did I You you also won't be able to cause uh another thing as well, for you guys don't know, a Kumu difficulty in this game is a it's a patched in difficulty, it was added in later on, so you wouldn't even be able to do that glitch with a Kumu mode. Since you have to play like the later patch. Letter. Myra's last communication. 
It was hidden with her files. It sounded so crazy at the time. But I should have believed her. <laughs> but yeah, the the launch glitch is pretty, pretty, pretty damn crazy. She's right. She's always been right. Theodore uses my own guilt against me. But guilt for what? It's their fault, not mine. They took everything. Yeah, I'm I'm personally more of a fan of just this. doing like glitchless I'm runs and so on. And God well, help anybody that stands in my way. Like I don't mind runs with like some glitches, but like that's that's like no major glitches is like the perfect like thing for me to run. What happened? F for Torres. F for Torres. She brought you here. Hmm. I'm sorry, Sebastian. I tried to save her, but... No. I shot her. The bullet wound was superficial. She died from injuries sustained in a battle with those things. Sebastian looks really tall in this scene. <laughs> she didn't have to die like that. She was a good soldier. She just wanted to save Lily. And now she's dead. It's all my fault. Again. No, Sebastian. It's not your fault. Yeah, if you're wondering, this is all unskippable, by the way. This is like the longest downtime in the game. You. You're right. That goddamn son of a bitch. This is what he wants. Trying to make me feel guilty. But he's the one who did this, not me. Oh, he's the guilty one. Oh, I think he's ready now. He's he's pumped up. Okay, that's the problem. What do you mean? I picked the Theodore strong, but it's Shh. I think that I found great. It's not quite okay. I'll go. Okay. All righty, here we go. Back into the gameplay, and we got ourselves uh Tara's assault rifle. I'm sorry, Esmeralda. I'll make sure you didn't die for nothing. I'm gonna hunt him down like the dog that he is. Oh boy, so once again we're coming to this same open section from chapter 6. But it's like vastly different now. It's been overtaken by Theodore's like, you know, his disciples, enemies and so on. Man, seeing these uh, loading screens reminds me when the game first came out. And if you're playing on console, you were in these rooms for so long. <laughs> Shit. That really is a stronghold. Yeah, so we need to make it to this tower here. What's going on in there? Which it's uh close to the the hotel. We were in there earlier. This is a, this is a harbinger there. We can just run by him. He's just ignoring me. <laughs> and uh yeah, if you didn't craft this the sniper in chapter three, it pops up here. Okay. There's another uh, glutton over there. There's a bunch of it. We can actually go that way to progress, but we're actually just going to go this way. Run no mic. Oh, I have a mic. Oh, 
Hey. And here's the other spot where I'll be using a heal to sprint. Yeah, so in a Kuma mode, we can use two heals in the game to, to use to our advantage to sprint for longer. I like to use it for this part. Just to make sure those guys uh, can catch up to me. The hotel is clear, Hoffman. All right, one of the uh, this is the, probably one of the most infamous sections of the game, the fire walk. Very, uh, very tense part. Well, here it is. What probably, is it? probably one of the most nerve-wracking things to do, with, like if you're doing like a classic mode run. Nope, don't want to do this yet. Let's uh, do this. Oh, there's another actually, yeah. Uh, there's actually another fuse there, so let's get that. So now we're gonna do our last upgrades of the run, which is just for the sniper. I'm also gonna craft all the sniper rounds there as well. And just get all the bolts possible here. Alright, so we're just gonna get the damage here up to like level 2. Or. I can just upgrade it again in a bit. I probably don't have enough right now. I, I actually can actually do the rest of the game without upgrading. It's just to uh, make sure that we can get certain I'm shots off. Fast. All right. Okay. But there is there is actually another uh, mirror coming up. That's like, you know, it doesn't take long to get into it. So I'll just use them. I'll have to carry and operate it from here. It should protect us from the fire, but it won't stop those things in there from trying to kill us. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, if you guys don't know. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush, the director of that game, made, made this game. He started working on Hi-Fi Rush after this game came out. It's working! Just make sure to stay Good, like, five years ago now. I can't see anything through these... All right, let's see. Uh, put the sniper in my quick slot here. So this section is just basically a lot of disciple enemies in it. And it takes about it takes about a good like five to six shots to kill them each with the handgun, and then so I'm gonna I'm basically just gonna be rotating using the handgun, the shotgun, the sniper. And I'll be using the bolt mostly for emergencies. Watch your back, That's what you're here for. Good thing. They're everywhere. Okay. Well snipe him. And they really like running. Okay. Yeah, I'll just waste all that shock and ammo. How much further? It seems a lot longer once you're in it. He wants to keep oh. us out. Good. That means he's afraid. Alright, so we're gonna preset down a freeze bolt here. There's gonna be an enemy that's gonna spawn near here, so. We're just gonna set that down just so it freezes them. It should be time for. So the enemies all do all spawn in the same way here for the most part. So an enemy will spawn here. We'll kill them. Can you fix it? I'm yeah, this guy. Here's the guy that I set the freeze bolt down for. All right, and this is the end of uh, phase one here. We'll get a, we'll get a checkpoint now after we get by here. That was close. I told you it was temperamental. Oh yeah, but by the way, I was talking about the game has uh, it's a bit prone to crashing at times. the The end of this section actually is the part where the game can crash. So let's see if that will happen or not. <laughs> Literally, when you beat this part, the beginning of the the next uh, chapter, the game can crash. 
Let's see if it'll happen. Alright, so ahead of us here, three enemies are going to spawn. See, I'm just trying to save as much resources as I can here. Alright. Yeah, once you kill the three of them, two enemies will spawn from behind us here. I like how he, like, stepped up as they shot him. <laughs> now let's snipe him. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. All right, one more enemy now. I'm gonna electro bolt this guy. Oh, he's fired up. Alrighty, and that's the end of Firewalk. Bit of a uh, close call. I got a bit chaotic at the end there. Uh, also, game, please do not crash on me. The game can crash like at this like intro here. I think we're good. I'm sorry, Yukiko. I think at this point now it doesn't matter if the game crashes because we have the checkpoint I here promise. now. Alright. Alright, so probably the worst thing that we had in this run was the O'Neill fight. <laughs> I think, I think O'Neill really wanted to leave his mark on this run. You know, he wanted you guys to remember him. He, wa he wanted you guys to remember his name. Another uh, rip for uh, Hoffman, sacrificing herself for us. Don't worry, guys. We we will avenge them. Damn it! You're not gonna get to me. Yeah, uh, let's see. We're gonna equip the freeze bolts and come in here. Is it nailed again? The flamethrower boss fight. <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. Make sure, he doesn't see me. Okay. So yeah, we're just uh, moving through here. There is a gate blocking our way to get out of here, so we need to get to this crank to open it. There's also a harbinger in this area. We usually won't see him at all here, like, but he can block our way sometimes here. Let's see. If, let's see if we get marathon luck here. All right, no marathon luck. Okay, good. Not today, Marathon Lock. <laughs> there you go. The door, like, shuts once we get through here, so... Why does everyone want 
want to control Union. It's not even real. It's a little, uh... So this is going to be like a pile of dirt thing coming here that has a nail inside of it, which, you know, we craft that for explosive vaults. It's usually like a long animation to grab a ball. If you're in combat, the animation is instant, and if you shoot the wall here, it makes you enter combat, and you can pick this up instantly. A little small little time save. Okay. It's gonna be a little uh, safe roaming coming here. We're actually gonna go in there. There's actually resources we can get. And then after that, we have another area with a bunch of enemies that we need to invite to do us very specific strats for. Let's see, is there uh, I want to see if there is. Yeah, there we go. This should be uh, enough. Yeah, we, we should more than enough now. So everything I'm about to do here is going to be very specific. Uh, me crouching here makes this harbinger do like a certain attack here. And I do that. So I'm just going to do that now and just sprint. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so the strat there was to crouch and make the Harbinger do that certain attack there. And then just set down the uh, smoke bolt in the distance near the, near the crank just so we can escape then. This is a, uh, this is a time segment here. Well, I'm gonna kill the first uh, spawn here. Into that. Usually takes like one of each shot there to kill them. And uh, here, if we hide here, we can like bait a bit, little bit of time. The, the other two won't attack me. There's three spawn enemies that come in here, so so we're just gonna hide here. They're gonna come up to me here. Hey, how's it going, guys? Yeah, you go. Can I clip through you, please? Thank you. Alrighty, let's go. Very uh, friendly enemies there. Friends, all right. Before we go here, I'm just gonna go in here quickly, just to do this last upgrade I wanted to do before. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. So we want to, yeah, damage. Actually, yeah. Uh, let me see. Let me purchase uh, these sniper rounds. So it's a bit cheaper. Okay, so coming up soon is a gauntlet boss fight of the, you know, the most like infamous bosses from the first game. We'll see the Keeper, we'll see the Sadist, Laura. Pre pretty awesome segments. Which will be using a good amount of resources uh, for these parts as well. Okay. The Sadist here, uh, not really a boss fight, it's just more of a running segment. We'll get a proper fight with the keeper stall incoming. Oh. 
Man, the music here is so cool. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people would say this part is like fan service and all that, but I actually think it's it actually does align with the story because you know the one of the main parts of the story of this game is is Sebastian's you know is the trauma that he went through or the aftermath of what happened when he went to, you know when he was in Beacon. So, so I actually don't think this uh, doing all this is like out of the question oh how to turn tables Man, Sebastian, Sebastian got the blood in his mouth and all that? Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. All right, so to start this fight off, we're gonna immediately electrobolt them. I'm gonna do two sniper shots. Well, gee, I probably should just do one and then we can switch over here because he can actually just run into me and kill me here. All right, let's do that. So everything, it's all very specifically timed what I'm doing here. Like, so two keepers are gonna spawn in now and they spawn in a certain spot depending where I am. So I gotta watch where they are. All right. So let's set this here. They should. You should uh, activate this for me. All right. Good. All right. Set that there. Okay. Okay. It was a good time. It was a good fight. Oh boy, horror again! I think I think we all I think we all have PTSD from this from horror, right? <laughs> Let's see if I get the good RNG here. Yep. It's so if she spawns from this body, that's good RNG. Uh, she usually won't. Sometimes she won't do this. All right, just set that there. Okay. All right, so we need to turn two of those to activate a thing for the flames here. So now we just have to wait for her. Okay. Don't hit me, Laura. Be nice. Should hopefully walk into this. Yeah. All right, stun her there. Now just wait again. And that's the Laura fight. Very nice. Okay. Alrighty, guys. We're coming up to the final sections of the game. Let's finish off strong, shall we? We need to finish off strong, man. So you can see, like, the stem is in, like, just even more chaotic than it already was. Damn it. 
Oh look, Elden Ring. Where'd you go? You know, funny enough, there's a section incoming soon that looks like the Dark Souls 3 DLC. What is this? Myra! <laughs> Shit. What is she trying to do? Alrighty. Let's reload the sniper. So we just killed uh, Theodore there, the main antagonist. So why are we still continuing on? Well, Sebastian's uh, wife, Myra, is also in the stem as well. So that's what's going on. And she's like, there's something going on with her mind and all that. And she's like kind of against us right now. She's like, she's like very like overprotective of Lily. She, she's like, she has this thing in her mind that she thinks that Lily will be safe within STEM. Alright. Alright, so to start off this section, we're gonna do well, what any normal person would do is just immediately run up to the enemies and get a free stealth kill. Pretty uh, normal segment, you know? Okay. Okay, this is the basic thing we want to do here for these guys. We want to use either the harpoon or the shotgun just to uh, knock them over and stomp on them. Yeah, these these enemies are called the uh, the albedo. Okay. Alright, let's see. Another. There's gonna be a lot of them in this next area as well. Myra, stop! Yeah, so for this part here, I'm gonna harpoon. Harpoon these guys here in the legs to knock them over. If I get a lucky shot, I can actually hit two of them with one harpoon. Let's have even get this first one here. I do that. No, I only got one of them. Oh boy, and they're coming. So let's switch to the smoke bolts. Okay. Keep the smoke bolts up so they are stuck in this animation. They can't hit you while they're being staggered there, by the way. The way they're like wiggling their arms and so on, they can't hit you, so I need to be careful. <laughs> yeah, that's that section. Okay, so yeah, if you remember the Amalgam Alpha boss from the first game, we're about to see a boss that's very much like that fight. Or looks like the boss. This boss is called the Effigy. There she is. <laughs> oh boy. So we're going to start off with a sniper shot and do another one. This will stagger them if we get them. Okay. Let's do a few uh, shots there. Oh, he tried to go for a little attack there. Right, let's see what he's doing. Yeah, that'll stagger him there. Switch to the machine gun. Nice, we got lucky there. He usually wouldn't actually die that quickly. Uh, but he took extra damage from the flame and the explosion from the car. So he, uh, died, qu he died quicker than usual there. We, we got like really good like... Marathon lock that was actually on our side, so I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Let's see if I can actually pick up this uh, explosive bolts. There we go. An extremely fast uh, effigy fight. Can't let her take Lily. <laughs> Did 
This game has such a good uh, finale to it, ending. Is that our house? <sighs> All right, and now we're on on our way to the final boss fight of the game. This is it. Let's hope I don't mess up. <laughs> there's there's kind of a low chance that I'll mess up. Uh, in the la in the la in sort of the second last phase of this Myra fight, there's there's a bit of RNG in it that can that can screw me over. So I'm very curious to see if it's gonna happen or not. <laughs> Which involves a glitched out uh, hitbox, basically. We're, basically, we're, we're going to set a an explosive bolt on Myra's shoulder at a certain point. But for some reason, it'll attach to her chest instead of her shoulder. And it like it does no damage to her then. There's just something like weird with the other uh, hitbox. But uh, yeah, it doesn't always happen, but we'll see. I will be at the, I will get like a couple of tries with it like before I have to like retry or whatever. Let's see what happens. Yeah, for this fight, we'll mostly be using our sniper explosive bolts. Uh, at the start, we'll be using these harpoon rounds as well. Oh boy. <laughs> my god. Oh my god, a, a proper ending boss fight, unlike the first game. Oh my god, this is great. Hurt me. You'll hurt her too. I won't. Alright. God damn it, Myra, stop this! Think about what you're doing! I actually hit too early there, whatever. Let's do that. Do that. We do this. We just wait there. Okay. There's a bit of a, a chance that we can get like sort of a semi quick uh, kill here for this first phase. Nah, we didn't get it. Alright. Alright, that's good enough. See if we get these free spots off here. Did we get most of them? Yes, we did. That's very good. Okay, now we're just waiting. Make sure to uh, get my sniper. Let's make some more rounds. Now we just gotta wait. So her her uh, weak spots will now be on these little yellow things there. Right, we need to pause set down two. It's kind of funny that she says you can't stop me and then immediately after we do that to her. <laughs> yeah, this is a Kubu difficulty. Okay. Alright, very specific shots incoming here. So at the beginning here, we need to hit our shoulder here right at the beginning. This will cause a certain phase to happen. Alright, now we just wait. So now we now we can't like do any damage to her. We just gotta wait now. She she'll do like a the four or five hit combo here and then we gotta wait. And the thing I was talking about there, there before about putting explosive bolt on her shoulder. We're about to see if we're going to be able to do this or not. 
All right, let's see. Yay, we got a... The game worked properly. Very nice. All right, the final uh, two shots now. I must protect Lily. Did this uh, finish her off? Nope, apparently not. Oh, uh, why do you need a work game? Do I have another? I have another sniper shot, but I want to use the explosive bolts. Are you gonna hit me? Yeah, you are. All right, never mind. We'll just do it again. It's fine. The, there is a checkpoint with this fight, so it's, we don't have to do the whole thing over again. It's fine. Eh. I don't want to do this. The uh, that explosive ball should have finished her off, but apparently the width was too far away. But usually you, you can set it like on her, like not even exactly on her, and you'll like you'll be fine. Okay, once again, we just wait. Okay. There we go. <laughs> uh, all right, we're not we're not done yet. We still have an, another like running thing to do here, but that's the uh, that's the final boss in the game. We, we do have a little shooting segment to do with Kipman here, by the way. But this is the game essentially done. That's the uh, the final like hard hardest section of the game. N another little funny little thing about this part incoming uh so we're gonna be like stuck in like a cover behind a, like a wall or whatever you can't like move uh and even though it's a kumu you have iframes when you spam the uh the aim button while you're shooting so the enemies can't actually do damage to you here even on a kumu so you're invulnerable to damage right now while you're doing this so I can just like spam this over while I'm shooting. <sighs> Alright, you see that? I didn't think he was because you can hear but you can tell by the certain sounds that they make. Oh, damn it. Should I take a couple of shots now? Is he gonna pop up there or Alright. We we gotta do another fight here, but it's like really quick again. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's something with the uh with the frames there when you're She's gotta be like you have boy frames when you're covering and it's it's something with the the frames not going away like quick enough or something. <laughs> hey. Kill this guy. You can see that guy actually shot me there, but nothing happens. He, even those grenades there don't do anything to me. <laughs> All right. Gotta get to the stem room. Just need to make it downstairs. Hang on, Sebastian. Wrong, Kidman. Okay, after this now we have the final run with Sebastian. He's gonna be like running with his daughter to escape. You 
you would kind of see this park here incoming to be like sort of the the jet ski section in Ori 4, you know, where you escape with at the end. But the funny thing is, this you're completely safe here. You can't die at this part, even though the game's trying to show that you're in constant danger. But like, you can spend as much time as you like here. Y you can AFK here, go make dinner or something, and you'll be completely safe. Don't worry, Lily. We're almost there. Come on, we can do it. We'll, we'll just pretend that we're in constant danger right now, okay? We'll, we'll just pretend that we can actually die here. Oh no, don't... Don't accidentally fall off this little gap here. <laughs> Alright, and uh, time is incoming soon here. And, uh, time. GG. GG. And that is the Evil Within 2, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the run and the absolute madness that happens. This this is a Kumu difficulty. It does not pull any punches. It's, you know, it's exactly what it says in the tin. <sighs> yeah, Ecdysis, thank you so much, man, for inviting me back again, you know. Yeah, it's nice being able to see uh, the Evil Within 2 done on Kumo. I know we had Evil Within 1 done uh, a couple times. So yeah, it's that's, nice to that's that's a bucket list thing for me. You know, I can now say that I've done both Evil Within games on the GDQ channel now. So, you know. Yeah, it was a good time. I know there's some mean fights in between, but on a Kumo difficulty, one hit death, you, you kind of have to expect there's going to be some, some patches, but underestimate and good run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, guys, uh, that's going to be it for me. Uh, if you guys if you want to follow me on YouTube, I have many Evil Within videos, challenge runs, all there, same as